Uh, doctor, we are going to start now, so I'm going to take lead now. Are you ready with your screen share? Uh, can I have one moment? I okay. will stop sharing and share again. Oh, okay. Well. Okay. Okay. okay, sure, sure. Uh, meanwhile, we are getting ready, so I will give a general announcement. Uh, please, everyone, keep your microphone on mute, unless otherwise the speaker asks you to unmute and speak. If you have anything, you can just write it down in the comment box on the right-hand side, and we will address to all of your uh, inquiries. Uh, as for now, uh, just allow a few more moments. Uh, since we are fixing up the things and then we are going to start it shortly. Thank you. Well, Doctor, am I yes, yes. need to start now? Uh, are you ready now? Yes, I am. Let me see. Yeah. Okay, let me uh, let me just start that. Okay, uh, by default, I will keep your microphone on mute. So if in case you have to speak uh, at your screen, there will be an option to mute and unmute your microphone. Because if we keep, if two people keep their microphone on, there is an ego. 
so the echo cannot hear with the other people than what we are speaking now yeah so i will keep your yeah. microphone on mute when you have to speak uh, i will try to keep it unmute all the time but otherwise you can just click on the unmute sign thank you Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Assalamu alaikum and good morning to everyone. Am I audible? Somebody can just reply in chat box. All right. Uh, let me double check with the YouTube viewers. Am I audible to YouTube viewers? You can write in the comment box. Okay. All right, Bismillah Rahmani Rahim, Assalamu Alaikum, and once again, good morning to everyone. I am Dr. Harun Rashid, the country representative of IEEE Power and Energy Society, in short, PES. Uh, in, in accordance with IEEE PES Day 2020 in Malaysia. So, welcome once again to IEEE PES Day 2020 webinars. Uh, some of you have been attending our webinar series earlier, so, welcome you again. And those of you who have joined us for the first time, uh, you are most uh, more than welcome to attend our rest of the webinars. Uh, webinars, and the recording of the previous webinars are all available at our YouTube. Uh, the YouTube link I will share shortly in the chat box. Then you can access to the previous video, previous webinars as well. So I would like to take this opportunity to welcome the global audience today. We have people not only joining from Malaysia, we do have some people from coming from Sri Lanka, India, uh, Bangladesh, Pakistan, that region. So I welcome to all of you since it's very early morning for you, the time, time zone is a bit different, uh, but thanks for being with us. So without further ado, I would like to introduce our speaker today. Uh, in today's webinar, today we have a topic, Embracing Digital World as Technopreneur, which is a very interesting topic. In fact, I personally love this webinar to be part of it. So without further ado, I would like to introduce our lovely speaker today is Associate Professor SR Dr. Nongaini Muhammad Tawil. Uh, she is an Associate Professor at Department of Architecture and Built Environment at Faculty of Engineering and Built Environment. UKM or University Kabangsan Malaysia in English, the National University of Malaysia. She did her PhD in property finance from University of Malaya in 2009. Since June 2014 until 2019, she was the deputy director of Center of Entrepreneurship and SMEs Development at UKM. Thus, she was giving all of her efforts in entrepreneurial development. She attended the entrepreneurial courses for MOE DCU programmed in Dublin City University, Ireland in 2013. The, uh, she developed entrepreneurs among the students as the advisor of AIESEC UKM and the chairman of the student corporative. She gave opportunity to the students to explore entrepreneurs world. In 2016, she attended faculty training program at the faculty of, of uh, Stanford Technology Venture Program at University of Stanford in enhanced entrepreneurship education at UKM in Malaysian context. She has trained more than 300 educators and more than 300 SMEs. As for now, she has mentored more than 50 students, startup and SMEs through Center of Entrepreneurship and SMEs Development at UKM called UKM SESMET. 
in Asian region, she is the member of AAJEE, which is Asian Japan Entrepreneurship Education. So without further ado, I would like to hand over the session to Associate Professor SR Dr. Nurgaini, and I welcome you to spare your time to come and give us, share your knowledge with us. Thank you very much. And I will unmute myself. Uh, I will unmute yourself and I will mute myself. So if anyone have a question, please do write only in the chat box. Do not unmute your microphone unless otherwise asked. Thank you very much and enjoy today's webinar. Over to you, doctor. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and very good morning to everyone. Or uh, if you are in any other region, I don't know what is the, what is the time, but uh, welcome to this forum session uh, as me as a speaker. So I was given the I would want to share with you guys. Before, but before that, let me thanks thanks to IEEE for inviting me to share my very little knowledge in digital world. But I would want to share with you whatever the knowledge that I have. So I believe there are lots of you that have the knowledge, maybe more than me, and has actually doing it together with the entrepreneur or you yourself as technopreneur. So my topic today will be the embracing digital world as technopreneur. And uh, before I start, I want to share with you this video about why you should embrace in digital. Once upon a time, business as usual was often good enough. No more. Where we are going, good enough is dead. In a world where everything is connected, where everything is equally excellent, where performance is reaching perfection, there's only one space left to compete in. We are. Right now, we are the central point of the raging world of change, fueled by digitalization, normalization, augmentation, disintermediation, automation, while the list comes on. Science fiction is becoming science fiction. Think about self-driving cars and computers that can learn and think. The way we work will never be the same. The skills we need will be dramatically different. Winning or losing are now happening faster than ever before. So what's your response? How will you discover new opportunities in one of the most transformational times in human history? Are you driving change or are you being driven by it? Disruption has become the new normal. With change, it's always gradually, then suddenly, well, things really have stopped happening gradually. This change is exponential. Everything that used to be dumb and disconnected is now wired and intelligent. Cars, cities, ports, farms, even our bodies will be wired to sensors and will talk to each other. These game changes are also combinatorial. They amplify each other, creating a perfect storm of change. Random computing fuels big data. The Internet of Things fuels artificial intelligence and deep learning, which fuels robotics. However, anything that cannot be digitized or automated will become extremely valuable. Human only traits such as creativity, imagination, intuition, emotion, and ethics will be even more important in the future because machines are very good at simulating but not at being. Yes, more about them tomorrow will do some of our work. But this will allow us to focus on things that cannot be automated. To imagine change squared, you've got to start engaging more with what might be. Not just with what is. Immerse yourself in the immediate future, five to seven years out from today. You need to go beyond technology and data to reach human insights and wisdom. Technology represents the how of change, the tools represent the why. The future is about holistic business. The opportunity is to be liquid, to learn just in time, not just in case, not single improvements, but complete transformations 
not individual systems that mean ecosystems. Humanity is the true and lasting value of this community. We will engage, wait, and buy things because of the experiences they provide, because of their transformative power. The future doesn't just happen, the future gets happened. The new way to work is to embrace technology, but not to become it. The future is in technology, yet the bigger future lies in transcending it. Let's live and lead from here. Okay, well, that uh, video that I share with you is about the importance of embracing into digital technology in our life nowadays. As we are now in a phase or in a phase of we cannot go anywhere. We are stuck at home, work from home, business from home. Everything is at home because of this COVID-19. And in fact, our seminars today is done in a way of webinar. Webinar is one of the digital, digital technology that we use when we want to speak or we want to share with other people. So when we talk about digital transformation, we are... Now we cannot run from the 4IR or digital world. So when we talk about uh, the 4.0 industrial revolution, before this, we can say that ah, oh, we are not yet into that. Ah, oh, we are supposed to do it with human. We are not supposed to only rely on technology, but this. This is happened nowadays. Because of the COVID-19, the world is freezing. There are less cars on the road. There are no face-to-face -face in physical, but we're doing it in digital. Either it is in webinar or either it is in social media, we cannot say that we are not into it. Even the elderly need to learn about the digital. They need to be there. So if you look at these slides, living in a digital world where almost every purchase decision predominantly depends on the online presence of marketer. If we talk about business, this is what happened. Everything now is online based. If we talk about Malaysia, I believe this has happened worldwide. If before this, we are doing shopping only when we have time, when we go to shopping mall or whenever we want to buy things, we drive our car, go to the shop and buy things. If we talk about, if we talk about uh, research, we do have been doing it online for such years by email by looking at the online catalogs in example but nowadays with this disruption of covid 19 when the world is freezing we do shopping like every day i can hear the rider sending things from morning until afternoon we are not stopping the economy is still going on it's revolving so we want to talk about digital transformation. The first thing is what is digital transformation? Where before this, we are living in the world of digital and analog, or we can go to anywhere that we want. But now it's different. So we need to embrace into new tactics. An example for this seminar. If before this, we will have face-to-face -face presentations. You can ask me at any time, while doing the presentation or after the presentation. But with this new way of living, we have changed into embrace into new tactics, where in this case, you need to write in the chat box. And unfortunately, I can't see the chat box. And then reshape your company culture because we are talking about technopreneur, reshape your company culture. If before this, we, you want to do it offline, 
all the time. So you need to look into few things in your company that you need to reshape your company. In examples, if before this, you have your marketer that you can call to your room and ask, what have you done today? What can you do today? But now it is different. Perhaps when we talk about reshape your company culture, your way is living is work from home. Maybe after this, if we have free from COVID-19, the world is moving again, we need to look into what is the functions of our staff. Do we still need they to come to work every day? Or what is the future? Where can we go? So when you talk about reshape your company culture, you might have shared stuff in HR by using apps. Or maybe you will have the marketing that is not only for you, but sharing. Sharing is one of the things that you can do when you do digital transformation. And a lot of apps or a lot of software need to be, I don't think only need, but I believe there are lots, lots of apps, software will be come out in the market to help you to face it. Whether you like it or not, Facing one to one is no longer is no longer the main things that you need to do. So you need to reshape your company culture. So you need to have your staff that also know how to embrace into this world of difference. So ICT will be the best that everyone need to have in hand okay so so when we talk about human resource again human resource how many do you need maybe you will have less than that before this we talk about robotic so robotic they are not infected by the coronavirus so maybe robotic will be the best if you are in manufacturing area so with that you can remote the order or the instruction for them to do what they need to do. Number two, you need to have the benefits of your human resources. You need to go give them the skills of do it, doing it through online. And you might use only one or two companies to come out and help you in terms of doing it. So your company, Culture must reflect the core values that may inspire you to flourish your venture and your objective of the future. So we talk about company, it will always come into vision and mission. So if before this, your mission is nothing to do with technology, now definitely you need to have your mission, the one that will carry your company's vision, that will uh give your that will lead into your vision must have the, the digital digitalization in terms of your mission so when you're focusing on your aspect of your business business there are bigger picture that you need to see how do you choose your supplier in example will you still go into shopping around offline or you can only use online. In, it's only that when you do it online or in digital, there are things that you need to consider, especially on the security. Of course, there will be scammers fraud in terms of doing the business uh, with the technology, but there are, there are actually a room for you guys in technopreneur, as technopreneur to create or to come up with a valuable applications of software that can detect whether the, uh, the, the deals or the discussion is genuine. Now we go into digital, effective digital transformation. If we go into digital uh, transformation, it can give you 
more more potential potential customer potential networking because everything is in your fingertips in your fingertips so therefore venture into webinars that you can go so that you when you go into uh, when you take an action for your staff, in example, to get as much knowledge as they can through any webinars, because they don't have to be there, but only in digital. So I guess the, this one can help you into transform your company to be at least a dupe, or you can see what is the niche that you can do. Okay, and. You need to also acquainted with your consumers and their behaviors. So there are lots of applications that can help you in terms of why the wider your your circulations of your consumers. You can do more practical in terms of getting to understand their um, their behavior, what they want. Because if before this. We can only give people to test or to look into product. Before these people are quite worried or not confident to buy things or to value things or to, uh, to integrate things through online. But nowadays, since we are all locked in our own place, we cannot go anywhere. So we need to understand our consumers and their behaviors we can use lots of uh, applications or at least a Google form to look at what they want. When we go into research, market research, and before this, we need to give them to see the product in real eyes. You need to touch it, to smell it, to take it, to feel it, to give the, the, uh, your ideas or to give your, your decision or whatever that you want to share about any products that you want to share, you want to see it. You want to look at it. You want to see it through your eyes. But now with this disruption, nowadays, the new norms is digital. The new norms is online. So use your skills, or if you don't have that skill, hire other people to do a good video presentation to show your product in example so that they can give feedback on your product based on the videos or based on the 3d that you can show them then you can learn what is their behavior so that you can enhance you can enhance the product you can do many things this one also related to digital thinking digital not digital thinking uh, critical thinking, when we talk about critical thinking, you want to have the process of from the eyes of the viewers, from the eyes of the consumer. What is actually the one? How can you make a prototype? So before this, we go one by one, discuss face to face, but now you need to do it by online. You might need to have sending your product, your prototype to your potential a uh, partner or your potential customer and ask their opinion and ask them to give feedback through online. So online is actually not restricted your value or potential, but it is actually wider your potential. If your potential before this is just people around you or the company that you know or only the networking that you have, but with this digital, you are embracing a world, a different world, or a bigger world that you can share to many other people or to many other companies. But the problem with this is it is not easy for you to hide it from your competitors. They might see it, they might want to copy it, but make a rules. So that is the importance when you understand the pattern. Why you need to have the intellectual property in your hands because you want to protect yourself. Now let's look at the transformation is an extensive and continuous undertaking. So if you look at transformation of digital, 
it has moved from its traditional operating models. As I have mentioned before, when you are a businessman, you move from traditional operating models where if you are the CEO or the CMO, you might want to go to your networking and share what you have with them and discuss closely, either in a, in a close conversation or in a big town hall or whatever. But now you move from its traditional operating models into a different way of models. A webinar is one of the ways. We look at the system. There are so many platforms you can use. You can have Webex that we have used now. You have YouTube. You have Jitsu. You have Jitsu or Jitsi, I can't remember. You have Zoom. You have models that you can use to discuss with your staff or you can discuss with your potential investor now look at the organizations to leverage new tools and applications of course these tools there are some of tools that are free in the market but if you want to get the advance definitely you need to buy and remember the moment you have the new tools and applications when you buy the applications the economy will revolve the economy will circulate the economy will be better rather than we keep on be in the free zone only. So in examples, there are tools like murals that you can use as a tool that you share with other people that you can both collaborating others, your networkers, your investors, where you can have like discussion online. Both parties can give their uh, ideas advice solution suggestion by using mural i would want everybody to look at murals explore into murals because in this situation we are really really rely on technology and mural can give you the way of collaborative discussion collaborative learning collaborative presentation you can give your ideas, you can write your ideas, and the other parties can also do so. You can go into FinTech, where FinTech has been running all over the world past few years, but now you need to enhance that. How do you do the business financial transaction? You need to use FinTech. You can have audited from your uh, other auditors company to go to your company and you audit your company by using any finance uh, applications or people that doing it for you but using applications so there are new tools and applications if you want to look at things in example you can go into drones drones is an effective tools to me that can measure in fact even in agriculture or in mining they can this these powerful tools can get, help you in terms of traveling to a place that you cannot go give you information into it help you into doing it in example if you want to spread the fertilizer at the agriculture farming big land you cannot go there how can you do? You need a tools and machines. So with this drone, by far away, from far, far away, you can do it. Look at the industry of filming industry. If before this, you need the helicopter and the pilot to do so and do the filming. Now you only use drone with minimal people, but understanding the technology. There are lots, 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 lots of technology. Now, when we go into technology, when we talk about drones, in example, we have the GIS, the GPS. There's so many things that can help you in terms of studying it. Look at now about the COVID, COVID-19. That has affected the whole world. And there are hundreds of thousands of people have died. And there are millions of people have been infected. So how do we know that that people has no 
is not infected by COVID-19. How do we know that people are weak in terms of that? So perhaps one of the technopreneurs can come out with the tools of software that can solve this scary situation where you can have the scanner through your through phones, in example. Phones is the one that will not leave us, or maybe we cannot leave the phones. Some people say they will die without the phone. The day is dry without the phone. So having a, a, a software inside your phone that can detect whether people have the disease or not is very important. I can see that now in Malaysia, because I am in Malaysia, and I think particularly Malaysia, but all over the world, we have some shopping mall or even a shop, small shop has this digital scanner with one person that need to Put it on the head even though it is not near but still not so far they need to shot we call shot need to take the data and see what is the value but if we can have like the things that can just detect with that we can put it there and we, we we need to jeopardize one person to do that but if we can have a tools that can detect from one angle, like if before this, we have the CCTV, why can't we have that CCTV for disease detector in example? So there are lots lots of tools. And if, because of that, digital partners, digital talent and new ways of working will be, will be spread out. And those from, I believe the electrical, electronic, the software engineers, the IT people can come up with digital talents and new ways of networking. I believe even people without that knowledge will now try to be in that and try to venture into that, try to dive into that. So we really, really need to have, if you are in a company and you don't have that, Perhaps you need to have digital partners, or perhaps you can hire digital talent that can help you to grow your business, your financial, and so on, to market your product and to give you the best. I guess nowadays, because of we are not able to meet people one to one, to meet people face to face, so therefore the technology in making the best video or the best 3D or augmented reality yep. to show what you are doing or the virtual reality is very in the net for you to convince your audience or to convince your, your customer that your product is very good. So therefore, Ecosystem Connect will, is needed to deliver and enhance products and services. Yeah, even though we are very into digital technology, but there are some places that we don't have Tesla there. We still need human to be the rider. So a system, a, an ecosystem that connect, the deliver, enhance products and services are much, much needed. Because even though we are living in the digital world, we connect people through digital. But you cannot get your product through your computer. Yes, you know you may attract it to the product. Yes, you will do the business uh, trans transformation. You might do the, all the transaction online. You can have the procurement online. You can sign contract online. But the moment you need to deliver the work, you still need human to do it for you. Human to send your product. But there are places that they are now venture into drones as they deliver. So we look at Ecosystem Connect. So when we have that, definitely we need to have the talents or the experts within our company to make sure that it can be delivered. Again, when we talk about Ecosystem Connect, 
need the ecosystem need to be connected by online by digital but also need humans remember when we look at the videos previously so it says that we need to have all this transformation we need to have all this digitalized but don't forget we still need human to run to operate behind the screen yeah so when we have that so we know when we are in terms of transformation did in ex extensive we really need to do it extensively now so we can pursue into new markets and we also can get new customers it is actually wider if we can change or uh, we are now into changing our life we, where is the new norm is technology where the new norm is digitalization where the new norms is mobility online mobile so people all of us whether you are young, whether you are kids, or you are an elderly, you need to venture into it. The way of buying things is different. Even if you are an elderly, you say that you, if the customer is an elderly and they say, oh, I don't know how to operate in online or digital, they can still get the help or the assistance from the young one, from the youth, or from whoever that can help them into getting into the market. So basically, it's giving the company a new way of pursue new markets and new customers. Your customers is not only from the from people around you, from community around you, but it is now worldwide. Yes, we do. Before this, we can see that website, social media is is a very powerful tool in terms of telling people what you are doing when you do business to business basically you are more on website in compared to social media but if you want to promote your products or if you want to promote what you have unless what you do is a very secret thing you need the social media twitter is a powerful thing millions or thousands of hundreds of thousands of people will retweet, retweet, retweet what you have if you are having a very good product. And if you can deliver a very good presentation in terms of video, augmented reality, virtual reality, to make people, to engage people, to hide into their heart for, that, for them to get the value. But in terms of technology that we need to use in, in the uh, online education, now the school, the school are closing. Our kids now has to learn from home. The university students are not allowed to come back to the university. So there are numbers of people, limited numbers of people need to be, need, need, can be do it business or any discussion or learning in terms of face to face. But nowadays it's different. It's very, very much different. Now, what is the problems here when we talk about technology? In examples, I'm doing this webinar. How can I sure that everyone or the organizer sure that everyone is still in this webinars? Is still with me? Are you still with me? I don't know. I can see. I cannot see your face. I cannot see your reaction, whether you like it or whether you don't like it. Or you have any doubt, or you don't have any doubt, or you are excited with the speech or with the presentations. So, because of that, you can have more people in the market, even the school students is in the market. Or just imagine, before this, even one house, you have only one computer or laptop and phone. And you have like four kids. And all kids, need to have an online platform for they for them to go to online school but at particular house maybe there are only one laptops or desktop and need to be shared by many many people at one time four kids need to go to four schools or four classrooms Two parents, father and mother, need to go from home as well. 
So in short of that, if we talk about four kids, you need to have six six technology in their house to make sure that they can be in the appropriate place of study or working. Is there any members in this webinar's room can have the ability, or I'm not sure if they are in the market, but from one computer, it can be operated by three or four people at the same time. They have different, different face, surface, or screen, and they can monitor it. I do understand there are people that have many, many um, monitor to monitor their work at one time. In example, for the Forex person, we have like three or four to see all of the all of the face of the forex to see the up and down of the currency but can it operate like okay one people one person is doing school a another one school b another one university a another one uh, doing audit another one is doing monitoring the company so this is the thing that you can think about so you can have more people Rather than they buy more laptops, computers, iPad, notebook, perhaps we can have more monitors only, but there are systems that can, that can divide them into different, different rules. Well, when we talk about transformation of digital, definitely, as I mentioned before, the security challenges, such as hybrid trees and vulnerabilities is need to be precisely, seriously think about it and also need to take into action. Your competitor can easily be in your business. The virus, as bad as COVID-19, can crack your system. So definitely security challenges is very, very much things that need to be think deeply, wisely. Because the cyber threats is, of course, number one in terms of to make sure that your business, your product, or whatever decision or whatever ideas that you have keep in you. In the world of digitali digitalization nowadays, everything is wide open. You may have more customers, you may have more investors, you may have more people that like you, you may have more opportunities, but the security challenges can actually kill you, can actually disrupt you. People can snatch your ideas. People can take your business, change a little bit, and become their business. So the security challenges and cyber threats is very important, especially for each of the government to ensure that the digital security is at the top notch and to prevent everybody, even though as an individual or a company or an organizational, to be less vulnerable. Vulnerable organization, people are there. So the security challenges are very, very much needed. I, I don't want to mention about the apps, but we worldwide know there are one apps that people see there are challenges, there are security issues, there are people that lost their money from the bank because of using this application. So therefore, everyone needs to be very, very careful 
And that's why there are people that are very in, reluctant into using digital online trans, especially online transaction. They're even afraid that their personalities will be will be viewed by everyone. So therefore, the security challenges really need to be taken into account, especially from the government side to ensure that all peoples, all the citizens, those in the organizations, those in the university in terms of exams, an example, how can you ensure that the students are answering the online exams uh, not a scam. Uh, they are themselves doing it. How can we do that? So because of that, there are, of course, risks intensifying alongside digital adoption. But we cannot run from adopting the digital because we are now digital community, digital globally. We are there and we cannot simply still want to be not into it because the new norms are there, especially when COVID uh, attacking all, us all over the world. So how do we start to undertake in the digital transformation journey? Number one, we need to lay a firm foundation for digital success. We need to understand the digital. We need to go into webinar. We need to have, we need to really, really feel that digital is one of the ways. Digital might not be only one way, but digital is a must for you to have. Thus, Lay a firm foundation for digital success for your company and then balance the legacies with new technology. The technology is changing very rapid, very fast. And you, still, you need to be aware about the technologies, about the software, about the applications, about the security. How do you do that with your team members? So you need to have balanced legacies with new technologies. When you, if you are a technopreneur, you understand that the technology is very much, very fast in terms of evolving. Last time when we have our first computer, it's very big. In 1990s, the monitor is big and heavy. But now the digital, the monitor can be as thin as a film. There are some that the, the monitor is not a monitor. You can just put it on your paper and you can see it. So the technology is rapidly changing. So if you talk about handphone, it will always, always, always evolve and it will always come into a new technology and tool. It will always come into a better camera that you can do good thing. Perhaps one day we have the, tele the handphone that already built in with VR or AR inside it, a special one that you can bring anywhere and doing it and do the discussion online, digitalized 3Ds with that technology. So you need to also focus on end-to-end, -end, not discrete initiative. So you need to look into it from end-to-end, -end, how to do it. Always go into, always aware, there are new technologies. Always aware about what your government are giving in terms of technology. Always look into it. As in Malaysia, we have MIDA, we have MDEC. I don't know about other countries, but I believe there are there are a government uh, incentive or government initiative in doing it, <clears throat> especially in this new world, new norm of our life experience. Then we need to look into the people that I mentioned. How can we help them? 
definitely as for the youth, for the university students or the graduates. Their chances to be employed might be might be lesser and lesser. So what can they offer? What can they offer to the world? What can they offer to others? One of the ways is by becoming the gig economies, where when they are gig economies, they are the one that become the freelancer to many other companies. But for them to be that, they need to have a good abilities in terms of conducting technologies or providing technologies or creating technologies. So manage the people that mention. How can you choose the right one? So your freelancer. How can you manage? In example for tourism. How can you engage your tour leader from all over the world to do marketing for you, to bring them? So this is the one, if you talk about tourism, perhaps the augmented reality or virtual reality is very much needed in terms of we want to share with people. This situation is an example, as a very good example or the needs of the people. I believe, like in Malaysia, we are more than one month struck in terms, struck in terms of living in your own space. Value your own space. Value yourself. But there are people nowadays keep on throw back their travel time, their traveling time last time. They went to Korea, they went to Singapore, went to UK, to London, to US, to New York. China, everywhere. So they want to plan what's next for their traveling. So we need to have people that can use VR or AR to come up with this thing so you can choose it. So perhaps in that technology, we come up with this um, document so that they will not change into other companies because the competitive the, the competing now in, uh, in terms of the company is very big because there are many to offer. So if you are not into that, you cannot manage the people that mention. So mitigate new dimension of digital risk. So definitely this is almost like we talk about security, cybersecurity and so on, that challenge. And definitely we need to integrate into an ecosystem-based world. Don't create digital island. So it is... A worldwide, it is abroad, it is for everyone from everywhere. And please do not, please do not leave your remote area. That remote area also needs help. That remote area also needs your economy to be empowered. So integrate into an ecosystem based world. Integrate, be in that not only with your own digital islands. So this is the ICT tools for system usage in Malaysia done by SME Corp back in 2018. This is 2018. Even in 2018, we can see that 91.4% are using smartphones. 90.1% are internet connection. 86.5% are using it in desktop and laptop. Yeah, high usage. Limited usage is social media, but still high at 70.5%. And 43.8% are using e-commerce. But now I think e-commerce need to be higher because you have no other choice in doing business, definitely you need to go into e-commerce. Okay, in terms of mid low usage, at back end business process, finance and accounting is at top. 50.2%, I believe this one come from the FinTech, finance technology, the apps, people are start using it to grow their business, to do transaction. Number two is 28.8% is HR. Nowadays, they are going to shed, shed people, 
shared facilities. So if we, before this, we only have, we own our own accountant. So perhaps with this 28 point at present, so we don't have to have our own, but we can share our accountant or finance officer with other companies. HR, recruiting people. You might not need only one person that you have in your company, but you can have tools. That one person have the tools that engage to many other companies. So your burden in fix fixed uh, income that you need to uh, fix source that you need to pay is uh, lesser yeah and then the po's the inventory crm and erp is going low and low so this is 2018 so i guess in 2020 everything will hike everything will go up because you have no other church you cannot see your people you cannot take thought one to one but you can still use the website. See, now, when we're talking about digital, the other things that you need to also consider is the time. I can see that now when people are very into online, people very into digital, the world are not stopped. Your day is 24-7. You are working 24-7. Your email your whatsapp your telegrams is ding 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 in your phone 24 hours people keep on sharing people don't sleep at night so we need to balance this this one need to be put into limitations in your company if you want your staff to stay with you yeah, or if you are doing worldwide, definitely you need to go 24-7. So there are pros and cons in terms of managing or balancing the time. Because remember, when we do business or when we work, we also need to have work-life balance. So when we talk about work-life balance, yes. If you are a person that are workaholic, most of the time you want to look into your work, but remember the part of you as a human, you still have a family, you still have your burden, or you still have the views that you need to go into it to balance yourself as a human. Okay. Now let's look into the technopreneurship. Uh, I guess technopreneurship is a new breed of entrepreneurship. So before this, if we look at entrepreneurship, it's a wide definition of entrepreneurship, the one that have ideas, innovator, innovative person, creative, do business, new things. Either you enhance or you create new things. You're innovator or you ideator. You are an entrepreneur. But when we talk about entrepreneurship, technopreneurship is a little bit different. But technopreneurship is a new breed of entrepreneurship where it's coming together of people who are intelligent, driven, creative, tech savvy, and passionate with appetite for calculated risk. That is technopreneurship. So those from engineering, those from science and technology, those from information technology, ICT, software, you are a technopreneur. Yeah? So a technopreneur, because you are into technology, your business are into technology, you think like a technologist. So a technopreneur starts out with nothing but an idea with existing practice and system and thinks of doing things differently. So you might add on technology in terms of what is you do before. An example, before this long, long time ago, people will only use rooms to clean up their house. And then the technology comes into vacuum. But you still need to manage the vacuum. And then the vacuum has evolved from vacuum with the bags inside, the paper bags, with vacuum with cyclone by Dyson, in example. And now their vacuums are remote controlled. They work by themselves. So that are coming out from the technopreneurs. So 
creates a product or solution that uses the half and capability of technology to change the way something was traditionally done. So we create things, robotics. So we have like uh, in examples, I just get to know about this uh, kitchen machinery thermomix. I'm using examples that I use. Thermomix can do everything for you. So just use the button. They have like thousands of recipes. Just follow it and they will do it for you. You don't have to do it manually. So you create a product or solution that uses the capability of technology to change the way something was traditionally done. But how can people really go into buying it when the price is so expensive? The technology, the virtual reality, the augmented reality, a good video can convince the people to do it. The founders of Uber's, in example, thought of ideas of a different way to call a cab. Because of the problems of getting the taxi by the roadside or getting the taxi by the phone call. Therefore, it's built a GPS integrated app. So if in Malaysia, we don't have Uber, but we do have Grabs and many, many, many other companies that have imitate or enhance a little bit of technology from the Uber's ideas. So in last two years, when I used four years ago, I've been using Uber when I was in US. You cannot see who, who is the driver, but now we can in, in fact go into, see where is the car goes, or we can connect with other people. So maybe for your kids from school, going back home by using this e healing system, we as parents can see where they move. That is the thing that Technopreneur do. So definitely Uber has completely changed the economics of the taxi and cab industries. So if before this, you need to be off the road or you need to call the cab or taxi. Now you can use online just from the application. Perhaps you can have the applications of finding your taxi or grabs by putting the time when you want it to be there. So people can, oh, the driver can see, oh, I can be there by this time, so I take it, yeah? So now they are using the system, oh, who is the nearest, who is the closest Uber drivers or e hiring drivers to take that business? So they think differently. They think definitely, definitely different. When I was in Stanford, uh, university back in 2016, I have this opportunity to go to this startup uh, that uh, built an app for so medication. He said that uh, he is a um, ICT student before that graduated and uh, doing his um, bachelor and master in IT. And he said, he saw many people suffer from waiting at the clinic, especially to a pregnant mother. So he started an idea of how about having uh, digital doctors, online doctors. So he started his interview with people on the bus and also on the plane. That's what he told us at the time. And then he started with uh, interviewing doctors, whether they want to be in. What he created is very good for those as outpatient. So they don't have to be there waiting for so long. They can go to the apps, find the doctors that they want, whether nearby or anywhere from all over the world. The clinics and the doctors, Identity need to be revealed. In fact, the doctor's certificate need to be there for the patient to be convinced that they are dealing with the, with the right person. So I think that is another technologies. And from the interview, they will know what are the symptoms that they have. And then 
because uh, in the US, they need to buy the medicine, not from the doctors themselves, but from the pharmacies. So this prescription will be directed to the nearest pharmacy. So the pharmacies will send to them directly to their front door. So that is what Technopreneurs is doing. So basically, Technopreneurs pushing the frontiers of innovation in terms of artificial intelligence, machine learning and expert system, augmented reality, expanding virtual reality, expanding the physical world, as we know. I am in the project with our universities where our teams from uh, the Faculty of Technology Information is doing augmented reality for the tourism where it's using the based of the place uh, place of interest based augmented reality and this one is is much much needed in terms of uh, dealing with uh, clients for traveling they need to see it clearly what is the thing around them Blockchain, beyond Bitcoin, distributed ledger, decentralized database, so many things that Technopreneurs is doing. The Internet of Things, this is something that has already reached our living rooms like Amazon, Alexa, Echo, Alibaba, many, many things. Well, 3D printing is also technology that been, uh, 3D printing can show you how does it, it come out with a prototype straight away. Additive manufacturing and embedded manufacturing, AM, 3D, etc. There's so many things. Cloud computing, business or digital analytics, uh, data, including business intelligence and big data. There are lots, lots, lots of things that technopreneurs are pushing the frontiers of innovation. Yes, we do need people from business, from marketing to do the business, to run the business, to manage the business. But we really need the technopreneurs to come up with this amazing, beautiful, and very useful for we in this whole world. So I'm now into my end of my presentation. Let me give you one more videos by Deloitte to see what can be done by technology. <laughs> German enterprises are facing a wave of disruption. Not only are technology and society changing, but the whole country's economic DNA is undergoing a transformation. We at Deloitte have developed four scenarios of what this transformation will feel like. Let's take four distinct perspectives on what the German enterprise landscape could look like in 2030. <laughs> Integrated Platform Provider Hi, I'm Peter. I'm proud to be working for a large German mobility provider, which is what car makers have evolved into, if you like. As a student, developing software was my thing. So in this job, I have to stretch myself every day as the main emphasis of my role is on developing software-based customer experiences. We have all evolved from being the legendary German engineers to being humble solution designers. Just imagine the faces of my colleagues at this once mighty company. My team consists of colleagues from different departments and across the entire value chain. Many joined us from smaller companies that did not make it in the global platform market. The good news is that the general level of skill in the country is good. Talent, the right skill focus from respected universities is abundantly available. And again, older colleagues have trouble finding a landing place in this new world. My company tries to soften the blow by setting up lifelong learning programs. My daily work routine is fully digital, in line with the rest of our day-to-day -day life in Germany. That turn of events was not obvious 10 years ago. We all had to invest significantly in building up a digital infrastructure and had to accept the new rules of the game, which was painful at times. But now, I really identify with my job. 
I work for a global market leader that has a strong home base. In our industry, we set standards for the rest of the world. Specialized front runners. Hi, my name is Mia. I work for a medical device manufacturer, a small niche player with highly innovative products and services. My employer is part of a big national alliance of healthcare providers that aims to offer integrated solutions. Oh my, this alliance is painful. We spend years making the various standards compatible, but it is the only way forward. The largest player in the market just went bankrupt. They made a huge investment in a connected care solution platform that never paid off. Such ideas are just too costly and too complex for a single enterprise to manage. Our alliance launched an integrated offering and all participants now share the competitive advantage. However, if I am honest, I am envious of some of our alliance partners who have become specialists in the vanguard of their segment and are experiencing global demand for their products and services. In my engineering department, we spend most of our R&D budget on fulfilling compatibility requirements, a boring yet tricky task. New talent is drawn from inside our company. We retrain and upskill them since other departments have experienced many job cuts in recent years. But I really don't want to complain. With that alliance, I hope that we will be able to compete with our integrated solution at a global level, which would be a step up for us. For far too long, we have been watching from the sidelines. Copycats. Hello, my name is Anna. I work for a domestic consumer technology company. My department is called Product Innovation. However, we don't do any innovation in the real sense. As a transcriber, I fly around the world trying to find new goods and services that we can copy and adapt. But our market shares are on the decline because, to be quite honest, we are losing unique IP every day. The latest idea is to work as the extended workbench of integrated globally dominant platform players just to keep the company afloat. Even though I travel a lot, my firm is losing global reach and we focus only on the domestic and a few emerging markets. Reduced R&D budgets make my job a vital source of development. Many of our competitors have moved to more business-friendly and technologically advanced markets. We use our scarce financial resources to increase our efficiency. Here, increased automation of processes was the big step. This meant massive layoffs across the board. A lot of my friends lost their jobs. But the future is not bleak for everyone. We urgently need engineers to drive our automation which is a task our traditional workforce is not trained for. We try to participate in upskill programs offered by public institutions. Some of our smaller competitors can handle the situation better as they can quickly adapt new technologies and service concepts. Maybe we will be able to replicate their success. The Master Combiner. This is Alex. I'm a freelance designer with a background in customer-centric services. Various companies, known and unknown, work with me to combine existing technologies with proven customer-centric offerings. We copy approaches that already exist and focus on integrated, pragmatic offerings by using and applying other market players' portfolios. However, sometimes it's disappointing for me to see how slow we are to adapt new technologies. My clients are constantly trying to expand. They want to leverage economies of scale. But the name of the game is to automate more and more processes to achieve efficiency. But this is accompanied by an increasing number of layoffs. The R&D spending of my clients 
is focused rather on evolution than on revolution. The same could be said about the German workforce as a whole, who are under great pressure from global exodus. I did not choose to work as a freelancer. My old company went bankrupt. However, I feel lucky to have turned that corner. Enterprises need pragmatic thinkers with the right skills. People like me. Freelancing gets my foot into their door. As most firms now shy away from high fixed costs. More and more of my clients are smaller, agile players. They adapt more quickly to new technologies and develop novel service concepts. That's their way of competing with the big players. But they have a difficult challenge ahead. Developing integrated solutions is impossible for the small guys. I have come to like my job. It is always a challenge to combine different existing technologies into customer-centric offerings. These are four different scenarios that show how differently the future for German enterprises might play out. The choices companies make will have an impact on people like Peter, me, Anna and Alex. At Deloitte, we observe trends and events happening right now which could take us into any one of these futures. Are you ready to place your bet? Okay. So this video is showing that what is consumer like Alex as the freelancer or the economist needing technology, Mia and some others of the automated. So this is all the, the things that the technopreneur can take into uh, action or the ideas of doing it. With that, I... Uh, with that, I end my presentation and uh, go back to Dr. Harun. Dr. Ani from UKM. So this is the end of my slide. Thank you. Yeah, I do, but uh, okay, let me see. How do I remove? No, I want to help. <laughs> I can I go bigger screen for, for the chat box because I very small. Oh, <laughs> because the participants is. Uh, bigger in compared to the chat box. Okay, okay, I can see the chat. Box. Yeah, there are two yeah. comments. Where is it? Any question? Doctor, you can uh, make your screen smaller, your video screen smaller, so you can see the chat box a bit wider. How do I make it smaller? Bring your cursor to your video between the line, between the chat box and your screen. Okay, oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, yes. But this, the chat box is still very thin, right? Slim. Yes, yes. Uh, it's okay. I will go through one by one. All loud and clear. Good morning. Good morning, Doctor. Our dear is a bit poor. It's made blah, 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 blah. We are live, live at YouTube now. Please give me the link so I can see it later. Video is distorted. YouTube, okay, slide stock. Nice video, mural. 
Yes, Mural is an application that I use with my colleagues or my students. So in Mural, it has a very powerful um, tools for entrepreneurs, such as business model canvas, the SWOT analysis, the lean canvas, the uh, empathy canvas. There are lots, lots, lots of uh, uh, tools inside the Mural. So you go look at Mural, and if you are an educator for education, it is free. But if you are not, it will be, you can have it like 30 days for free. But it is very powerful. Like uh, I'm giving speech on unleash your inner strength. I'm using the SWOT tools. I'm also using the empathy tools. So if you are in an organization or if you have a meeting with other colleagues, you can have that tools in murals that can help you to, everyone can give their ideas. Everyone can write on that. It's like a whiteboard or chalkboard so that people can put together and you can see who write, who, who is the one that write things. And you can write it together at the same time. So mural is very, very good and powerful, especially when you want to discuss concurrently or, or we call mural has this concept of collaboration or collaborator. So you can collaborate to discuss. You can collaborate um, to know what is actually that everyone wants. And the best part of mural is they have this uh, one particular things as for uh, as voting. So, in example, you are in a company. Everyone is giving ideas, 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 and then. Each of the members can vote three times in example. So you can choose only three. So, and then after that, the mural will give the list of priority, which one is on the top list or go down, go down, go down. So you can choose the best three in example for your ideas. In example, if, uh, if in, this, in the classroom, in example, I want students to give an ideas of how do we make uh, things better for the B40s. In Malaysia, B40s is the below 40s income. So we want to help them. So they can give, okay, let everyone give their ideas and then let everyone to vote three ideas. Then you get the best three lists for you to uh, actually go in deeper, explore and what to do. Yeah, I see Jan G has given the mural.co. I need to go back. Where have I? Oh. Okay, mural, mural. Looking at this, that we are the other way around. E commerce definitely shoot up due to COVID 19. Yeah, COVID 19 is hurting, but I don't think that e commerce will shoot up. It will, people will use it, will go into it, definitely. What are your views of human interaction? Oh, yo. <laughs> it's, it's going out. Uh, what, what are your views on human interaction? Do you feel they will have less value as we move towards a more digital world? Will people's skills be irrelevant? Yeah, definitely people skills still irrelevant. In example, if you want to have... Um, I, I, I know that people are worried about digital. People are worried about technology. But remember last time when we don't have electricity, we use maybe our parents, our grandparents use the iron for ironing the clothes with only steel and inside is the coal. Then we, we move into technology. Now we can have like, ironing with the wire, right? So believe that, yeah, human interaction, maybe physically will be lesser. People's skills might be lesser used, but we still need people. In just that, how you see things differently, how you creatively sell yourself with your skills. May I know the website, please? Check mural. There are there are one here. Mural called GNC. 
Dr. What is your view on implementing more automation on certain industry, although it's undeniably true? It increases efficiency, consequently drives the prices down. But I, I, uh, okay. This question is very difficult for me to answer because I am exactly like you. I also have worried to my children, our next generation. What can they work? Where can they place themselves when everything has been taken over by technology? But believe me, there will always, always ways for this, for the people, for the human to still be relevant in the world. There were always new opportunities. It's just that you need to think about it positively. Look into it creatively with positive mind. You can see the opportunity. You look at Alex. He didn't choose to be a freelancer. But because of the company has a go into bankruptcy, he has been terminated. And then he become the freelancer and worked with many companies. So you can see the growth of small, small company that want to give the best of them. Yes, we cannot doubt that automation maybe give better ROI to the company, but people need to be very creative. Look at things positively. Don't keep on complaining. Because when you keep on complaining or start complaining, you will not finding the way. But if you look at it positively, even though you complain at the beginning, an entrepreneur always look at things positively. An entrepreneur will always look at things, look at problems, look at uh, problems or disadvantage as an advantage. That is an entrepreneur. So for the technopreneur, you have more values that you can Create it on. Yeah, I believe that. So this is Miro.co. So I think uh, I have answered uh, all questions in this um, in this chat box. So I give back to the organizer. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Aini, for answering the questions. Uh, there is another comment I believe you can see. I think afterward I will go for, uh, uh, I have just one question that I'm going to ask after this. Okay. Is this the Lenovo to everyone? Okay, let me see. Just my two cents regarding the question by Farah Staki, new technology will create new jobs. Yes, that, that is what I answered just now. Automation will indeed replace the labor jobs and those automation needs people to maintain it too. My point is new job will replace old jobs. Yeah, thank you so much to Lenovo that gave that your two cents opinions. Yes, definitely there are automation that make it faster but there are still people who need to do the maintenance. There are people that need to do the facilities management. And there are people that still need to do the monitoring. There are still people need to answer all questions if you are doing business online. Yep. Any other question? Or did I miss any other question? Oh, oh there are many questions come out suddenly. Okay. Look like future is better for those who are good in technology. Is that going to create a social gap wider between human right beings? Basically, maybe, but can you see that our mothers, our fathers are now into what's up with their family? My mother is 71. My mother-in-law is 73. And they can go into technology, they can go into social media and ask us to buy for them. So I believe when it is 
the compulsory things in you that you need to use it. Definitely, if you take it creatively, if you take it positively, the social gap can be narrowed down, can be smaller if we want it to be, if we look at it negatively, definitely there will be a huge social gap. I remember when, uh, this is, I'm just sharing my experience in the university. The professors that is much, much more mature than me. Last time, they don't really into the technology. They are the one that disagree with e-learning, but now they are in front of younger lecturers. So I believe if you are enforced to be in the system, you will be in the system. Definitely the knowledge need to begin. You will. The people with less technology will learn how to be in the technology. Let me see again. Thank you for the answer. Just my two cents regarding the question of Farasaki. I have the answer that. Doctor, what do you think artificial intelligence will evolve? Right? What is it? Hmm? The evolve of the day with the increasing amount of people wearing masks daily. One of the application of all facial recognition will definitely need to be redesigned, right? Yes. Because if people are wearing masks, yeah, this is again come back into security, cyber security or security because you cannot see. In example, we, women, mostly women, in a prayer place, we are divided into men and women. You go into it, men are the, the people that wants to do the robbery, in example. They can just act as a woman because when you put masks, and you put eyeshadow like me now, you might not recognize whether it is a woman or man. So maybe a techno technology that can be embedded in the phone for everyone. We have the scanner that you can really see the people. What is this? Again, a security and our, what do we call privacy? Private. As women, mostly women are wearing scarf. So if there is a technology that can penetrate or can transparent your clothes or whatever you wear on the face, that is not good, right? So we need to think about it. You are all technologies, I believe. Let's think about it. So it is a good business. It is a good business. Okay, any more? Um, any more else that I miss? Look into it. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for being in my session. Organizer? Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Aini. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, yes, uh, it was really a wonderful session, and I myself has learned uh new things and got motivated uh, with the technology thing so as a conclusive conclusive remark that we need to learn actually if we are not adoptive uh, we have to be adoptive in order to gain what is happening in the market uh, like just as an example of my my own experience i didn't know how to go uh, live stream at youtube before mco so during this MCO, I have learned how to go live stream. So like our session right now is live stream at YouTube and we are able to access all those things. So like this, we have to be adopted. We have to see the new things, uh, which is quite important in this 21st century. If we are not going to learn these things, definitely we will, we will stay far, far away from the people. We will lag behind and we will not be able to catch up what exactly is going on and how we have to face the world. So with this, I would like to thank on behalf of IEEE PES Malaysia chapter and IEEE PES Day Malaysia team to our beloved speaker today, Associate Professor Dr. Nurgaidni Binti Mohamed Awil and UKM student branch team uh, who managed to organize this uh, webinar. 
and uh, managed to bring UKM students to learn and gain the new things. Uh, sh uh, sharing experience from our speaker and to to get an idea how we can move forward, how we can uh, carry on the things in our normal routine, despite of MCO uh, disturbing our life. So uh, with this, I would like to conclude today's webinar. And I would like to say once again, thank you everybody uh, for joining us. In fact, I have seen one comment. There was somebody from NSW Australia as well. So like we are going so far, not only in Malaysia, people are attending from uh, even from Australia. So that's a that's a good thing. That's that's about technology that technology has brought us together. So uh, I will just say that wherever you are, please stay home, stay safe and keep learning. Thank you very much for attending this webinar and see you in our next webinar tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you.